I'm sailing my solar powered explorer yacht away from the winter of Finland into warmer climates. And so far, the performance is just incredible. Even with barely any sunlight, I'm able to travel forward with moderate to slow speeds using this uh, small sail as a backup whenever there is barely any sunlight. And my mission right now is to head to warmer climates, field test this boat and see just how fast it can go uh, indefinitely or at longer ranges when you have proper sunlight. Right now I'm generating roughly 800 watts and that is enough for a travel speed of 4 knots. But it's gonna be faster and easier to maneuver than most sailing vessels once there is even a bit of sunlight. Welcome to mission log 2 of the Helios 11 prototype. So this is the yacht I've been building within the past 6 months, almost single-handedly. I built this from plywood and glass fiber. Despite it being a crude but still luxurious design, it is functioning way better than I expected. The hull is strong but lightweight. The entire yacht, with me included, is roughly 1.1 ton right now. The handling and center of balance is fairly good because we have batteries absolutely at the bottom of the hull and a lot of solar panels on the flat large roof and additional solar panels on the sides on the front deck and as a total we have roughly 5 kilowatts of potential solar inputs but what I realized is that if I wanted to have more performance here in the north I could just get a generator running on fuel those things would weigh roughly 15 kilos with uh, let's say 30 kilos of gasoline and with that I could uh, generate 1 to 1.5 kilowatts of energy and essentially just travel forward constantly. That would be a very small increase in weight and excellent improvement in performance. Maybe I was uh, not thinking clearly. I might want to have a generator right now, but then I would throw it away once I reach a warmer climate. So let's just go with the sail and the slight light we have right now. Now I've been talking quite a lot and uh, almost crashed into this island here. Nah, just joking, but I did get a bit too close. Uh, luckily, as I said, the draft is just uh, 40 centimeters. So unless I see a rock somewhere, it's almost impossible to drive on something unless I just uh, sail on top of an island, which I do not intend to do. I'm gonna tell you a bit about this adventure I'm on. So I started three days ago from uh, Turku in Finland and now I've gotten two-thirds of the way to Åland Islands here in the Finnish archipelago. It's wonderful, beautiful, but it will just keep getting better once I get further south and can enjoy the sunlight, the warmth. Right now it is 10 degrees here. I might get some snow here in one week or two weeks. It's technically winter, but luckily for me it is slightly warmer still for some reason. And let's get a breakdown of the stats of this vessel so far. So the first day I traveled with a steady pace of 5 knots. I was running the engine on 1.4 kilowatts only to conserve energy because there was barely any solar charge. It was both raining, cloudy and the sun is already at such a low angle that these all things compound together to almost no charge from the solar panels. 
uh, flexible panels that I have on the sides, they've been almost at zero all this time. But now that I have a bit of uh, light here, they start charging actually, and I'm getting uh, roughly 50 watts per array and 600 watts from the top panels, which are my main supply of energy. The following days I've been traveling with only 200 watts of engine power. I took advantage of the wind and sailed at the speed of 3.5 knots. A bit of wind and a bit of engine power to keep me on course and to provide some extra propulsion. It's pretty amazing that even in this uh, very unfavorable weather I'm getting somewhere with this yacht. And to be clear here, this yacht is not at all designed for these wintry conditions. I've expressly made the decision to only be around warm climates in the Mediterranean, in winter, and uh, yeah, anywhere I can imagine. I don't even have a plan exactly where I will go, but I know that it's gonna be warm and there's gonna be enough light. All of us in the modern world, we have now the opportunity to work online, to work remote, so that gives us the freedom to live anywhere and then we don't have to, for example, live in a boat in cold Finland. That's a very stupid idea because you could be in Spain, you could be in the Caribbean, whatever location you choose. It doesn't matter where you live, as long as you live in the most uh, positive and favorable environment for your creativity and productivity. And this is part of the design philosophy of True North Yachts. Freedom, sovereignty and essentialism. Finally, we're getting some brief sunlight. I'm charging about 700 watts right now. That is enough to get me going to my destination. Feels very good. And I'm looking forward to seeing numbers of 3,000 to 5,000 once I get into sunnier climates. This slender 11 meter boat that is 2.4 meters wide is equipped with a six kilowatt engine. No more is required. With this engine, the top speed is slightly above 8 knots, which is just incredible. You can cruise for several hours with the speeds, expanding the batteries, and if you have a completely sunny day, you can almost drive the entire day with full throttle. So this is much faster than any normal sailing boat of the similar size because you don't have to raise any sails, you don't have to be careful where you drive. This has roughly 40 centimeters of draft, so you could technically drive without any navigation, just uh, based on your vision. But of course, this boat is equipped with uh, navigation tools and GPS, so it is very carefree to drive and this is the key of my yacht design. It's not intended for sailors, it's intended for people who want to live free anywhere in the world, travel the world autonomously without having to refuel, without having to know the specifics of sailing, although we do have a small supplementary sail. This is the most optimal balance because when there's less sunlight you will still get a bit of extra propulsion with the sail and the boat needs no backup engines because the worst case scenario is that the engine somehow dies and then you'll just sail slowly to port and fix it or just maintain it out on the sea and get it functional again. Let's talk a bit about the future and the numbers for the next yacht, the Helios 11, will evolve into Helios 15, a 50 meter class yacht that will be built on a proper budget with skilled workers. I'm not a worker, I'm not a boat builder, but I actually forced myself to just do it because I had no time, I wanted to get it done immediately 
I built it in six months in a shabby shed, but here we are. I'm now living the luxurious yacht life, even though it's winter here in Finland, very cold, and I'm eager to get toward the south. But yeah, the Helios 15 will be entirely on a higher level because uh, imagine what I could do here on a cheap budget. I just ordered solar panels online and fitted them onto this hull. I have basic batteries that could be a bit lighter and in the roughly two to three years that I'll build this next yacht in a shipyard, all the electronics, the batteries, the solar panels will have advanced much further so the yacht will actually have a cruise speed of roughly 9 to 10 knots and an indefinite speed of 7 knots as long as you have some sunlight and the sail on that boat if it has a supplementary sail it would also be perfectly optimized with a carbon fiber mast this is just my father's sail he gave it to me it's been previously used on a uh, what does it say? DN88. So it's a very fast moving uh, vessel that you sail on top of the ice. I'm not sure what it's called in English. In Finnish, it's called Jäpursi, basically, ice yacht. And uh, uh, despite this being just uh, things thrown together, it's working exceptionally well. I couldn't have expected it to be this powerful. And it's also comfortable because of the roof being so large the cabin naturally becomes huge it's like massive i have one two three four or five six seven meters of a cabin where i can stand completely here it's roughly two meters high could be even a bit lower to bring the center of gravity a bit down. It's so spacious, so luxurious, despite uh, me just building everything in a hurry and just painting the walls white and having simple shelves. I'm gonna improve this as I go to make it truly a luxury yard. Keep updating on the story of True North Yachts. The next mission log will drop when I reach uh, Marianhamina, the city in Åland Islands. Until then, stay tuned by subscribing and as always, don't forget to get out there.